This is the number one thing that creates a healthy, happy life. And before I tell you, what do you think it might be? What's your best guess? Maybe you think I'm about to say like working out or maybe eating healthily. So before you go on, head to the comment section and let me know what your best guesses were. Okay, so let me give you a bit of a hint if you're struggling. It's one of the components of deep health. And if you're thinking, oh, what is that? Remember our health is so much more than our physical health. And this idea of deep health underpins all of my coaching work and my personal philosophy. This is a quick summary. Deep health, our overall well-being, is made up of emotional health, physical health, mental health, existential health, so having a purpose to get out of bed, and environmental health. I don't think it's going to be what you think it is. Close relationships. Close relationships is the number one thing for a healthy, happy life because community relationships and friendships are vital for humans. Connection. And before we dive in any further today, go hit like and subscribe on this video. And if you head to the comment section, you'll see there um, a couple of links and you can pick up my free getting started guide or get fit guide. Let's dive in. So connection. Brenny Brown defines connection as this, the energy that exists between people when they feel seen, heard and valued, when they can give and receive without judgment, and when they derive sustenance and strength from the relationship. We are literally hardwired for connection. Even the most routine counters that we have with other humans act as regulators on our brain. Uh, relationships impact the ways that our brain develops and performs. Hmm, you're probably watching this on the screen right now, right? Yes. <laughs> Maybe you're even thinking, yes, I've been here for hours staring at my screen. And many of us know that our screen time is perhaps higher than it should be, mine included. And why am I bringing this into it? It's because our screen time can and does impact our relationships in this day and age. And I don't necessarily mean the put your phone down and talk to me, it's dinner time kind of way, although of course that's an important potential boundary around screens, but the prevalence of social media in our lives makes us think we are connected. Like comments and likes and posts and photos, funny videos, emails, staying in touch with people that we haven't actually talked to in decades. It gives us this false illusion of connection. And I'm not bashing social media. It is a lifeline. It makes so many things possible and it's a way to share love and affection with those that are far away from us. But in many ways, it also makes us more isolated than ever. So I'm saying be aware. If connection is the most important thing for happiness and health, then we need to be aware of social media. It's not a substitute for a real warm living human being in front of us, being aware of that energy, that meaning, that body language. So seek out true connection when you can. Don't let social media be a barrier, let it enhance your connection. And another big obstacle to true connection is this idea of self-sufficiency. And I do fall foul of this a lot. We think we can do it all until we can't. I'd, we'd rather do all sorts of crazy stuff than admit that we're stuck or needing help or don't know what to do or that we're just plain exhausted. Many of us just don't want to admit when we're wrong or we made a mistake or we need a rest or actually that to-do list is totally overwhelming right now. So. When did you ask for help last? Back to Brenny again. Until we can receive with an open heart, we are never really giving with an open heart. When we attach judgment to receiving help, we knowingly or unknowingly attach judgment to giving help. Oh, I know a lot of us are very comfortable helping other people out, but if we judge that in any way internally, then actually we can't truly receive it. 
and giving and receiving help, that true connection can be counterculture in today's society. It requires some bravery, some audacity to go out there and be our true self. So I'd like to leave you with some questions to muse upon or journal about. And remember, if you're loving this and liking this, then head down to the link in that description section and click there so that we can continue learning together. So question number one or journal prompt number one, are you showing up as the truest version of yourself in your relationships without trying to be perceived as anything different than you are? Journal prompt number two, what's the biggest thing getting in the way of your relationships right now? Is it social media and screen time? Is it not reaching out, asking for help? Number three, how would you like to see your relationships transform over the next month and beyond? Ideally, what would you like them to be like? And number four, what are some small steps to take right now to move towards that? I hope you find true connection here and in the rest of your day and in your week. Click on the next video. Let's keep learning together.